Welcome everybody back to DJ Tutorials. Today we are going to be making the Master Sword. Now this is from a very famous video game. If you don't know what it is, you've been living under a Tektite. I don't know what to tell you. So basically for this, uh, it's going to be a two-part series. Uh, I guess you could call it a series. We're going to be doing the sword. Then we're going to be doing the shield. It's going to look something similar to what you're seeing on the screen here. I'm basically going to be playing and showing you how I take something that sort of inspires me to either work a little bit on my skills or to create something original from scratch and how I would go about making that particular thing in 3D space. Now, if you're interested, you can get the project download and all of the textures and everything else that I'm using on my Gumroad. It's there, it's available. The link is down in the video description, but let's go ahead and get started on this. So what you'll need to begin is just sort of a reference sheet or some sort of image or a series of images. Now for me, I decided to go with this one. It's probably more of an artistic representation from somebody else, but I really liked how it looked. And I found this on a quick Google search and I thought, you know what? This looks really cool. I was looking at some Let's Plays recently from one of my favorite Let's Players. His name is Kikoskia. You should check out his channel. Put a link down in the video description. But basically that inspired me to want to make something fun from that game since it's such a part of my childhood and all that kind of stuff. What we're going to be doing here is we're going to be sort of playing around with our project. Now you can see here I have the screencast keys down in the bottom left. Sometimes that may turn on and off. I'll try and make sure to turn it back on if that ever happens. But you can look down there to see what I am doing. And I'll tell you that this is more of a, not not really a you know Blender beginners sort of thing. This is a more beginners modeling uh, project, but not really a uh, beginners tutorial. So if you don't know your basic maneuverability and how to go around inside the program, I do have some of those on my channel, or you can check out Grant Abbott's channel. I can put a link down in the video description, but we're just going to use this default here. And what we're going to do is we're going to add this reference image to the project file here. So what we'll do here is we can hit Shift A to place a reference image and we're going to select that image. And you can see here, it's a nice little PNG. So we have a clear background. You can use a JPEG with a white background or something like that. And we're just gonna set that right in the middle of our scene here. Try to bisect it with the Y coordinate right there, that green line. And what we can do is we can take that image, go down here in our properties and we can make this a little bit transparent. So to begin with here, what we're going to be doing is we're gonna be adding a plane. Now, a lot of times when we have an object like this that is more of a mirrored object, we don't want to model both sides at the same time. That's really a waste of time. So we're going to bisect this, Control R, right click to set a cut right there. And we're going to simply delete the right side there. And over here in our properties, we can go here to generate a mirror. You can see there we have our mirror. If we take this point and move it around, you can see that it's mirrored on that other side, but we want to enable clipping because clipping will make it to where that just stays just like this. Now, a lot of beginners or even some people who are used to modeling might start by just doing something like this and they will sort of like pull these down and just start you know, blocking in their shape like this. Now there's nothing wrong with this. In fact, the first time I did this project, I did something similar, probably not with this here. I'm just gonna get rid of that. But, you know, bring it up here like this and then, you know, make it sort of like this, okay? And then have to model the beveled edge and stuff like that. Now the cool thing about this particular sword design is it's not a very simple in comparison to other ones. It's not a very simple design, right? Because we have this more broadsword-esque element right down here where it's sort of like is flat and then comes down into this other like beveled shape here to get to that blade edge. And you could do it this way and then add, whoops, add a loop cut here and then start modeling it in this fashion and doing a bunch of stuff. But we do have a little bit of an issue here, which is that this side, when it flattens out, we really want to control the loops of all of that, okay? So in order for us to really do this correctly, and a, in my opinion, a more proper way to approach this sort of thing, is that we want to start by thinking about our edge control. And what I mean by that is that instead of just going off and like, you know, adding points and all this sort of stuff, what we want to control is actually this inner edge here, 
right in here. We want to control this. And we can't really control this currently with it, the clipping on here. So we're actually going to remove the clipping. and I'm going to pull this over like this. I'm going to explain to you what I mean by the edge control. So if we take this right here and we just sort of move this up like this, and if we hold control and right click, you can actually set some new points and some new, uh, some new points or some new edges based on what you have selected. So for example, if I have this point and I right click with control selected there, you can see that I'm just adding stuff. But if I go like this, right, you can see that now if I edge select that with alt left click, we can control those loops and those edges a lot more easily. But you can see here that it sort of stops right in there. And what we want to do is we want to make it so that this whole edge all the way up the blade is controlled a lot more easily with that edge control. And that's going to make it a lot easier for us to add some, uh, add some points, add some geometry, edit the geometry, edit the points, um, all sorts of things like that. Okay. So we're going to sort of like change some of this around so that we can control that edge much easier. So something a little bit like this. And as we build this out, it might seem a lot more complicated at first, but later on, as we sort of build this out and edit and you know change this, we're gonna see that this actually helps out in the long run. So you can see up there, I'm starting to get a little bit overlap, so I'm gonna turn clipping on, and at any point you can turn clipping on and off to start putting these pieces together like that, okay? Now, one of the things I want you to focus on as we're building this, and one of the things that I wanted to focus on while I was building this is that I don't want to make this overly complex. I wanna keep this relatively low poly, you know, quote, low resolution, because we're really just wanting to block in some of this stuff right now. And what we wanna do is keep this from getting overly complicated and to where we have too many things that we're thinking of all at once. We just sort of want to get that edge under control. And if I alt left click, you can see that entire edge there. And if I alt left click here, you can see I have, I have that entire edge there. And if we hit E and then pull this over directly to the right, you can hit X to just like lock that to the X coordinate. And then we can left click to set that. And you can see now we have it go all the way across and we have that shape there. So next, what we might want to do is we're actually going to pull this up on the Z axis. And the reason why is that when we start to build the depth of this, we don't necessarily want the mirror that we're going to put on the coordinates here so that we get that mirror depth. We don't want to have our points all getting connected together and all sorts of weird stuff like that, okay? so. You can select these here, but you can see here when we press Z, you can see that now it's mirrored on the bottom. So if we hit E, lock it to the Z axis, and then pull it down, you can see there we're now making some depth. So then if we hit 7 and just look at this from the top, you can see there there's this sort of like curve shape for the edge that of the blade, the sharp point that goes through there, and then the edge sharp point that goes through there like that, right? So we don't actually want to have that selected, whoops, we don't want to have those ones selected. We'll just take these and we can scale them up or you can press G and then pull it over on the X axis. And you can see there now we are developing some kind of depth to this thing, okay? So we have a blade shape that's sort of being carved out from there. Hopefully you guys can all see that. Then we can take this G, Z to lock it down and pull it straight down. And now we have sort of an edge there that goes around the entire thing. But remember, if we look at this, it's got sort of a curve here. There's a you know curved section, it goes down and then it flattens out to this shape here. So we're going to press Control R, add a loop cut right in there. And we can deselect this here and press G and X to lock it down and just pull it over this way like that. And now we have more of a fun beveled shape with this edge right here. And we can easily change how this is happening, how this edge is sort of coming out here by grabbing this on the Z and moving it up or down 
or you can move those points around to however you'd like. There's so many few points at this time that we can easily just adjust this the way that we want. And if you don't like how this is here, how sharp it is, because it's just a straight edge right there, you can add even another loop cut if you'd like, and you can just sort of soften that by altering the uh, edge there, or you can add a bevel as well. And then we can go out like this, and we're just gonna change this up a little bit. We are going to go up here and we're going to change this right here from viewport shading. We're going to change this to matte cap and we are going to choose this one here because it's very good at showing us what a metal object is starting to look like. And we can start to see how our shape is coming together. Pretty low res, pretty simple. There's no rounding or uh, any sort of change in the general shading to make it not flat shaded like this. But as we look at the top here, you can see that we have some work to do. So we're gonna take the points that are on the bottom here. I'm actually going to remove this right now. So I'm gonna dissolve that edge with Control X. And I'm just going to move this up like this, move this down like this and just sort of set my blade shape in this way. And I'm gonna to go to wireframe here, just take a look at it. Looks pretty good. And control R to set that shape there or to control that edge. And then I'm gonna deselect these two. I'm gonna pull these over on the X axis to give a little bit of a bevel. And now I'm going to auto smooth. Now auto smooth doesn't always do what we want. Sometimes it does some funky stuff like this right here and we just have to be a little bit careful about that. And you can always go into your modifiers here and change the angle through here. And we can make adjustments in this way if we like, or you can always go into the edit mode and choose the particular edges that you want to make sharp. So if I right click this, I can mark this as sharp just like that. And you can see that it sharpens that edge there. And same thing with this here and this here. We can mark this as sharp to make a nice little sharp edge there. And this here, mark sharp like that. And you can see how that's starting to take shape there. And if I press Control 2, I can add a subdivision. So subdivision surface modifier, of course, very, very common thing to use. And we can start to control this a little bit more by taking some of these edges, pressing N, going up to item, and then changing the mean crease right here. See how it controls the creasing for that subdivision surface modifier. And you can go in here and you can adjust all of these items based on how you want those creases to be done. We can, of course, add bevels to this with a bevel modifier and all of that, and I will allow you to experiment and play with the couple things that I've shown you. You can maybe add a loop cut to some of these areas to tighten it up, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to stop. I'm going to allow you to take a moment to sort of mess with this the way that you like. You can go over here to the subdivision surface modifier and turn on this right here where it says on cage, and it allows you to see where things are located on your actual mesh. And you can control all of these sort of items, moving the edges around, the vertex points, adding creases. Um, you can add a bevel modifier if you like. I'll show you how to do that. You can generate a bevel modifier and choose certain bevels based on the item information here and changing instead of offset, or sorry, limit method here, you could change it to the weight or you can even add vertex groups or something like that. So I'm gonna take a moment and allow you to experiment with this particular shape. And I will be back to you in a moment and show you what I did. Alrighty, so this is basically what mine looks like. You can see it's right here. It goes all the way down like that. Basically all I did was I really just made some adjustments to get this beveled edge underneath here. I just sort of poked some of these points in there if you take the point and you grab it with the uh, G button, you grab it, you press Shift Z, you can move it around on the everything but Z axis. So you can just sort of move this around into a way that makes sense for you. And just sort of like shape that the way that you like it to be. 
I used some of the creasing and I also used a little bit of the sharp edges and I have the subdivision here. I did not use a bevel modifier for this. If you want to try and use it for yours, you are more than welcome to. I just didn't feel like I really needed to do it. Now for the little, uh, the little etching that you see right here, we're gonna be adding that later when we start to do materials. So we're not gonna be carving that in or anything like that. We're gonna be using a texture to create that. So you don't need to worry about that. Make sure that your sword goes all the way through this little handle bit here because we do not want any of the blade to be just sort of like sticking out or anything, you know, not really connecting in there. All right, that's going to be it for this tutorial. Hopefully you all learned a lot. And if you could take a moment to like and subscribe to the channel if you like the content that you're seeing here. For those of you who have been supporting me for so long, thank you so much. All my uh, folks on Patreon and the YouTube members thank you so much for donating a little bit extra to keep me going and if you're interested you can jump onto the discord the link is in the youtube channel information there's a link in there for you if you want to join us there and i will see you all next time when we do step two of this project